Hi, it's Ian here. In this episode of More Clients TV, I'm going to show you four specific ways you can get more of the attention of your ideal clients. So I'll see you in a second. Hi, welcome back. We're looking again at how to get noticed, how to get and keep people's attention so that you can build credibility, build trust, build authority and get people to take action. Now, last time we looked at the first step in attention, which was immediate attention. That's where you grab someone's attention by doing something different that stands out from the other stuff around it, a bright or different distinctive image using a meme on a LinkedIn post, etc. The next step in attention is short attention, where people voluntarily give you just a little bit of their time to see whether it's interesting enough that they're going to devote more. So for example, they might read the first couple of couple of sentences on your LinkedIn post before clicking read more. They might read the subject line on your email before deciding to open the email. They might listen to the first couple of minutes on your podcast or your YouTube channel to see whether again they should watch the whole thing. Now, Short attention and getting that short attention is driven by curiosity. So curiosity is when someone is interested enough, their curiosity is piqued enough that from what little they've seen so far, they decide that they want to find out more. And that comes from having an information gap. So in other words, there's a gap between what they know and what they want to know. And in marketing terms, you can do that by giving them a little tease, a little peek of what they'll find out. And then because they don't know all of it, they'll want to close that gap by tuning in and learning more. So you'll see at the start of a YouTube chat show, someone will say, on this show, you're going to learn A, B and C. So they're telling you in advance the great things you're going to learn. So that's creating that information gap because you don't know, you know, you haven't learned about them yet and you want to stay tuned. In an email subject line, they might tell you what you're going to find out inside the email. So you click through. Now, the people who are the absolute masters at creating these information gaps are the TV show people, um, especially serials like CSI, etc. Um, now, it used to be when you watched a TV show that it would open with the titles, the credits and the, um, and the theme tune. Well, it tends not to do that anymore. They have what they call a cold open where they get straight into the action. And the reason they're doing that is most people switch off when the opening credits come on. But if they start straight with the action, you go, oh, what's going on? Um, you'll see someone, you know, in CSI. CSI, you'll see them, uh, uh, some posh cars pulling up to a party, people getting out, people having drinks, and then someone being shot and falling over a balcony. And you're wondering, what, who's that? Why have they been shot? Who's done the shooting? And then the credits start, the title sequence runs, and then they get back to the action, and you know you see the investigators arrive, etc. And you're going to stay tuned for the whole episode to get your questions answered. The questions they posed for you and created that information gap in the first place. Another great way they do it in detective shows is where one of the heroes is seen kind of at the start holding a gun and getting arrested. And you're going, what, how, why have they been arrested? Um, and then, it'll, you know, you'll get the title sequence and then it'll go 24 hours ago and it'll take you back in time. And again, you've got to stay tuned to find out what happened, how it gets resolved. So TV shows are great at it. Um, in terms of how we can do it in marketing, there are a number of techniques you can use. Um, the first technique that I like is to use demonstratives. So a demonstrative is a word like this or these or that or those. And having those in, for example, an email subject line or like this in an advert. And this is an advert that ran for 40 years, written by a guy called Max Sackheim for Sherwin Cody's um, English Language School. Um, and the advert said, do you make these mistakes in English? And the genius of that advert is it didn't say, do you make mistakes in English? To which the answer is either a yes or no mentally, and then you move on. It's do you make these mistakes in English? To which your mental kind of answer is, well, what mistakes? What mistakes are they? Let me read on to find out what those mistakes are. So you almost can't resist reading on to find out what those mistakes are to see whether you make them. So you can use that, for example, in an email subject line. You could say something like, you know, don't make this career ending mistake. And then people think, oh, what is that career ending mistake? I hope I'm not making it. And they dive into your email to find out. Now, of course, your email has to deliver on the promise. It has to tell them about a career ending mistake that they should avoid making. It can't just blather on about something irrelevant. So you have to deliver on the promise of your subject line. But that's a great example of using a demonstrative. In that case, the word this, this career ending mistake gets people wondering what this is or what that is or what these are or what those are. And so they read on to find out more to raise their curiosity. 
Next example is schadenfreude. This is tapping into the kind of the, the strange human thing we have where we love to find out about other people's misfortunes. Um, so the German word schadenfreude. Um, and whenever I write an email, it's something like my worst sales meeting ever, my worst business partnership ever, my worst ever, whatever it might be. I always get my best ever open rates because people want to know about my worst sales meeting ever because they think finding out about it will help them avoid it. So there's benefit in it for them. But also they just want that human gossipy thing about, oh, I wonder what terrible thing happened to Ian. I'd like to find out. So it's it's harnessing that natural instinct people have of finding out about bad things that happen to other people. So that's kind of a surefire way of getting a good open rate. Another thing you can use is surprising links. So this is on a YouTube video. I'll just move out of the way here. This is what working with psychopaths taught me about leadership, a TED talk. Now, your immediate reaction is to that is, oh, I wonder what working with psychopaths taught them about leadership, because that's really unusual. It's a surprising link. You don't expect psychopaths to be linked with leadership. And because of that surprise, it raises your curiosity and you're interested. So you'll often see that in email subject lines I do, where I might say something, you know, like George Clooney's Guide to Leadership. Um, because there you're thinking, well, George Clooney's not known as a leader. Why Why, is it, why have we got George Clooney's Guide to Leadership? What's, what's going on there? And you, you open up to find out that strange connection. Turns out from a leadership coach friend of mine that perhaps George Clooney does know quite a lot about leadership. Or you could you could phrase it as what George Clooney knows about leadership the traditional leaders don't know. Again, just raising that curiosity by making that surprising link. Final one is to use curiosity adjectives. So don't overuse these, but by adding words like surprising, unexpected, unusual, weird to um, something, you're basically telling people that, it, that they're going to learn something new. So um, Daniel Pink's book, Drive, The Surprising Truth About What Motivates Us. I'm sure using the word surprising in there um, didn't, you know, send his sales through the roof. It's not the total um, thing that drove the success of the book. But I'm going to be much more interested in Drive, The Surprising Truth About mo What Motivates Us versus Drive, The Mundane Truth About What Motivates Us that you probably already know. I'm not going to I'm not going to be interested in reading that book. So saying that something is surprising or unusual get you know is a signal to people. Um if every email you write for example has a subject line saying the unexpected x y and z people get used to it and they they stop believing it, but using it once or twice and then again delivering on it in the body of the email or in the book so it is you know the truth has got to be surprising about what motivates you. And um, if it isn't surprising you will never trust that person again. You got to deliver on the promise. But by using words like that, um, you can raise people's curiosity and you can combine them. You can go back to the the um, the um, demonstrative and say, you know, the, don't make this surprising um, career ending mistake. Don't make this unusual career ending mistake. And that makes it even more interesting and curious to get people to open. So those are four ways you can use curiosity in your marketing to get people to give you just that bit more attention to get into your stuff. And then, of course, if they do read your email, if they do watch your YouTube show, if they do listen to your podcast and it's great, we then get into the very next step of attention, which is long term attention. We'll talk about that on our very next episode. I'll see you there.